Traveling in support of disaster response can be a little complicated. From the availability of hotels to how much you can spend, it differs with every event. This video will cover a few tips on traveling to one of our events. Before you travel, your home district EOC should request an increase on your government travel card. This helps with high travel costs in the disaster area. An increase usually goes up to about $15,000. You should submit a travel voucher every two weeks to minimize the risk of your card reaching its limit. All costs associated with your travel should be placed on your government travel card, especially for transportation. This protects you from liability. Do not rent a car on your personal card. All receipts over $75 must be claimed on your voucher, so make sure you keep up with those receipts. If you do happen to lose a receipt, you can do a screenshot of your city bank account statement and provide it to the finance center in your travel voucher that way. If you're flying, never leave your vehicle parked at the airport. Make arrangements with a taxi or a rideshare service or have someone drop you off. Your authorized laundry expenses for up to $15 per week and ATM charges for cash advances on your government travel card. These are reimbursable expenses that are only authorized for FEMA travel. And let's talk about those reservations for a minute. All first responders are to make travel arrangements by calling SADO at 800-953-7286. Be sure to use the option for first responder to get assistance more quickly. By using the first responder option, you will bypass the requirement to have your travel orders prior to an airline ticket being issued. Do not get caught at the airport with a canceled ticket because you didn't use the first responder option. Now, when it comes to rental cars, never take your personal or government vehicle to a Mobile District event. Always go through SADO to reserve your rental vehicle and do not skip or add insurance. Just let them reserve the vehicle in their standard manner they are accustomed to. This will give you the insurance that is required. 4x4 vehicles are hard to come by after a disaster, so please only get one if it's absolutely necessary. If a 4x4 is authorized for your deployment, it will be on your tasker. This is generally reserved for deployees who are assigned to field locations such as a debris tech monitor. If no 4x4 is available, all high clearance vehicles will do. Lodging can be very hard to find after a disaster. Not only do you have FEMA, contractors, and volunteer agencies all coming to the area to help, you also have disaster survivors who are unable to return to their homes staying in hotels in the area. So expect lodging to be challenging and don't let that frustrate you. Never pay for lodging in advance. If Sato is unable to book you a hotel in the area, you may use your own resources such as apps and websites, and that's totally okay. Just make sure that you note the allowable expense for the area that you're deploying to. And I'll actually come back to that later. Let's talk about FEMA base camps first. As a responder for FEMA, you may be asked to stay in a FEMA base camp. This can range from anything from a tent with bunk beds to compartmentalized trailers to a cruise ship docked in the area. If those are available to you, the information will be in your tasker and your welcome packet. In a large event, an LPRT or Logistics Planning and Response Team member may be available to help you secure lodging. That's not always the case, but if one is available to help you find a hotel, their information will be in your tasker. One more thing about travel. In a large event where lodging is difficult, USACE or FEMA may issue an actual expense authorization, and we also call those lodging waivers. What those are, are memos that designate certain areas for certain dates where you can spend more than the normal allowable rate. So for example, you're coming to Baldwin County, Alabama, where the normal rate for a hotel is $100. If there's an actual expense authorization for 150%, then you could actually spend $150 on a nightly basis and get reimbursed the full $150. Just be careful with actual expense authorizations. They will have very specific locations, dates, and amounts, and that may change and fluctuate throughout an event. So make sure you're paying attention to that so that you don't come out of pocket for your lodging. 